pessoal. Então, como passaram esta semana? So many new ideas, I'll work to make them worth. I can reach higher by trying hard. What will be my choice? My future I will write. I'm strong enough to fight for all my rights. To be a doctor, a janitor, a nurse, engineer, DJ, waiter, a policeman that serves. An actress, writer, driver, designer, you're free to choose a life that you deserve. Knowledge is the source in which I'll find my way. That's the start to make my dreams come true. I'll put my mind into getting in this world of work. To be myself a part of this world too. To be a doctor, a janitor, a nurse, engineer, DJ, waiter, a policeman that serves. An actress, writer, driver, designer, you're free to choose a life that you deserve. Lesson 15. Second day at work. Hi guys! Ready for today? Not yet. First, let's review. Primeiro ponto, os meses do ano. January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. Segundo, datas. Por exemplo, a abolição da escravatura no Brasil, alguém sabe? I'll help you. 13 de maio de 1888. Ou May 13th, 1888. Lembram-se dos centos? 100, 200, 300 e por aí vai. E nós vimos também os thousands. As novas expressões foram Excuse me, com licença, e Hang on, espere aí. Ok, we can move on. Hello, Mariana. Hello, Pedro. Hello. Good news? Yes, we have a job now. I'm a call center operator. And I am a waiter at the snack bar. They're so nice. Congratulations. Thank you. What time do you have to work, Pedro? Monday is my day off. On Tuesdays, Wednesdays and Thursdays, I have to work from 10 to 6. And on Fridays and on weekends, I, I start at 9 and finish at 7 o'clock. And you, Mariana, do you like your job? Yes, I do. Tell me about your first day. You are not going to believe if I tell you. Come on. Hoje vamos aprender sobre as preposições, prepositions, in, at e on. Reparem que, dependendo da situação, utilizamos uma ou outra. Vejam como Pedro respondeu a respeito dos horários de trabalho dele. What time do you have to work, Pedro? Monday is my day off. On Tuesdays, Wednesdays and Thursdays, I have to work from 10 to 6. And on Fridays and on weekends, I, I start at 9 and finish at 7 o'clock. Quando estava falando dos dias da semana, Pedro utilizou on. On Tuesdays, on Fridays. Já para falar das horas, a coisa muda de figura. Dizemos at 9 o'clock, at 11 o'clock. Mas enquanto isso, aí vão algumas dicas para a gente aprender a utilizar essas preposições. On para os dias da semana. On Monday, on Tuesday, on Wednesday. In para territórios grandes. In Brazil, in Acre. In Minas Gerais, ou para os cômodos, in the kitchen, in the living room. E at, para as horas, at 5 o'clock, at 10 o'clock, ou para lugares específicos, at the drugstore, at home, ok. I have to go, guys. I have to be at the travel agency at 10 o'clock. Ok, see you at night. We have to prepare the party this weekend. Oh, ok, what time do we meet? We can meet at 7 in my house, ok? Ok. okay. Bye, bye. Bye, bye. Bye, bye. Por aí dá pra gente reforçar a diferença entre as preposições. Vejam a frase da Mariana. I have to be at the travel agency at 10 o'clock. At the travel agency, um lugar específico. At 10 o'clock, para falar das horas. 
Ready for your second day at work? Yes, I am. Okay, let's start. We are starting the high season. High season is when people travel more. Our high season is during the summer. Yes, that is true. It is during the summer that people have vacations. That's right. So those are the places people want to visit more. Mm. Porto Seguro, Recife, Rio de Janeiro. Mm -hmm. Do you know any of these places? No, I don't. Let's see. Vamos aprender a dizer as estações do ano em inglês. Let's learn how to say the seasons of the year in English. Summer, autumn, fall, winter, spring. Good afternoon, travel agency. How can I help you? Oh, good afternoon. I want to go to Ceará with my family during summer. We are five. My wife, three children and me. How do you like to go? By bus or by airplane? By airplane. Just a second, sir. I'm going to see the prices for you, okay? Just a second or oh, just a sec. Essa é uma nova expressão. Significa só um segundo, okay? E também vimos algumas maneiras de se chegar a algum lugar. Por exemplo, by bus or by plane, by airplane. Mas há também diversas outras maneiras. By car, by foot, by ship, by bike. It is 899 reais and 99 But the prices are too high. It's very expensive. Well, sir. It is summer, the high season. <laughs> right seasons, right prices. It's very expensive. Can you give me a discount? Just a second, sir. E vocês se lembram o que significa expensive? É o contrário de cheap, que significa barato. Portanto, I'm sorry, sir. Summer is a high season. Airplane tickets are expensive. Hotels too. But if you go before Christmas, we can give you a big discount. I can send you an email with the prices. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I'm sending it right now. Have a nice day. Let's have lunch now. Mm -hmm. I'm hungry. There's a snack bar near here. Let's go. Okay. There. That's the snack bar I like. Mm. Hi, Pedro. Hi, Mariana. What a surprise! My supervisor loves this snack bar. We are having lunch here today. Yes, I want to have a sandwich. Well, then let me get the table for you. Okay, thank you. Please. Pessoal, notem a diferença entre estas duas frases. That's the snack bar I like. Yes, I want to have a sandwich. The snack bar. A sandwich. Essas pequenas palavras que antecedem os substantivos são os artigos que podem ser definidos the snack bar, a lanchonete, ou indefinidos, a sandwich, um sanduíche. Percebem a diferença? Quando quisermos ser mais específicos, utilizamos the, que corresponde ao nosso o, o, a, o, a, the. Quando não for preciso, utilizamos a, que corresponde ao nosso um ou uma. Um sanduíche qualquer, a sandwich, a lanchonete específica, the snack bar, ok? And I am a waiter at the snack bar. Vejam bem, quando o artigo a antecede um substantivo que começa com uma vogal, ele vira an, para a gente não gaguejar e dizer a apple ou a elephant, dizemos an apple, an elephant. Got it? Here. Can I take your order? Do you like sandwiches? Yes, I do. So let's order two, okay? Okay, fine. Two sandwiches and two soft drinks. Two soft drinks. Okay. All right. Mm. 
You are improving every day. Very nice, Pedro. Thanks, boss. Apareceu aqui um novo verbo, a new verb. Improve, que significa melhorar, desenvolver. O chefe do Pedro, his boss, acha que ele está melhorando. Nice going, Pedro. Good for you. Está na hora da nossa revisão. It's time for our review. Hoje aprendemos principalmente a utilizar as preposições in, at e on. Lembram-se dos macetes que ensinei para vocês? On para os dias da semana. On Friday, on Saturday. At para lugares mais específicos. At the bakery, at school. Ou para as horas. At seven o'clock, at noon. E in para territórios grandes, tipo in Brazil. Ou para cômodos da casa, por exemplo. In the bedroom, in the kitchen. Ok, guys. E vimos ainda as estações do ano. The seasons of the year. Pessoal, a melhor maneira de aprender estas preposições é treinando mesmo, sabe? Portanto, don't be shy, não sejam tímidos. Pratiquem o máximo de inglês que vocês conseguirem. Até agora, nós já aprendemos muitas coisas. O auxiliar do e does, o verbo to be, as preposições, outros verbos, as profissões, presente contínuo, presente simples, patati, patapá, patati, patapá. Enfim, já dá para começar a escrever um tanto de frases em inglês, certo? Hum, então, a dica de hoje será esta. Por que vocês não escrevem um pequeno texto falando um pouco mais sobre vocês? Hum, hum? Vejo vocês na semana que vem. Teacher, good luck and they're all yours. Kisses, bye bye. So many new ideas, I'll work to make them worth. I can reach higher by trying hard. What will be my choice? My future, I will write. I'm strong enough to fight for all my rights. To be a doctor, a janitor, a nurse, engineer, DJ, waiter, a policeman that serves. An actress, writer, driver, designer, you're free to choose your life that you deserve. Knowledge is the source in which I'll find my way. That's the start to make my dreams come true.